Finally, we have Andy Goldsworthy. And he's a sculptor and photographer whose site-specific artwork directly engages with the environment, incorporating natural specimens and found objects into a semi-permanent sculpture, which are then extensively documented in photographs. In fact, you could argue that the photograph is the final piece. The photograph is the result. Uh, it's intended as the only result for these pieces. Now, he studies fine art at the Bradford School of Art in his hometown and at Preston Polytech in Preston, Lancashire. While in school, he became familiar with other British artists following a, sim a similar environmental doctrine, including Richard Long and Hamish, or Hamish uh, Fulton. Although the physical survival of his sculptures is never ensured, he photographs his sites before, during, and after he creates his sculptures within the landscape, allowing these photographs to serve as a permanent record of each piece. While most of his well-known works are created outdoors in remote locations that hold a personal significance to the artist, some of his pieces have been shown in galleries. And his reputation as a progressive and environmentally conscious artist has made him popular as a candidate for public commissions. So he's always looking at these ideas and he's going to be one of those people you think of for public commissions because of the nature of the art, but also the time that he's speaking to, which is today. Uh, the piece we're going to look at is actually created in 2011 and is Strangler Cairn. So this piece is a three and a half meter sculpture. And this was created for the Cannondale Range Great Walk area outside of Brisbane, Australia, as composed of hundreds of hand cut granite and slate pieces shipped from a local quarry. In the middle, the artist planted a strangling fig. Now this is gonna be important. You can kind of see it at the top. That fig plant will eventually overcome the object of art. Arts Queensland posted a video in which the artist describes how he, his sensitive sculpture mimics the beauty and violence in nature. According to him, quote, sculpture is not always made gently, he says, explaining his inspiration for the project. So what's the going rate for an ephemeral meditation on the tension and tangible elements of the natural form? Well, about $700,000, a figure which has been rather controversial. The Courier Mail is a leading anti-strangler uh, party, a newspaper in the area, which enthusiastically or unenthusiastically referred to the artwork in question as an egg-shaped pile of rocks. The paper then breaks down the $684,000 budget behind the work. So when they look at it, the sum total of $330,000 went to the artist, while the rest went to production expenses, including $50,000 to airlift the pieces to their remote location. Art Plus Place calls the location, quote, a not-to-be-missed attraction. Its remoteness creates an uninterrupted viewing experience of the space where nature and art become inseparably tangled. Yet it also means fewer people will get to see the work, being a two-hour drive or four-day walk from Brisbane. So when we look at something like this, obviously there's going to be controversy. And in this case, because it's paid for with public funds, that controversy becomes greater. And people talk about whether this is worth the money that was paid for it, especially given that that fig plant will eventually basically destroy, that strangling fig will eventually destroy this piece. And if it doesn't, natural forces will. Maybe a bunch of teenagers will. But from the artist's perspective, it doesn't matter. What he's done is created something temporary, something that's going to be destroyed, something that's going to suffer from entropy. And in doing so, he's A, gone against the art market, 
because we always want to preserve things. We want to sell things. And you can't really sell something that you can't move. And that's a four days walk from a major city. Second, B, uh, when he's creating this piece, he's creating something that speaks to the environment. Uh, how the environment will overgrow and destroy all man-made objects. It's really sort of an existential piece when you look at it that way. You can also look at it as capturing really the temporary nature of man, the fact that man is by their very nature going to pass on, going to disappear at some point. And therefore, all of our art is really in some way temporary. Even Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper is temporary despite our best efforts to preserve it. Most of it has been replaced over time by a conservator's brush. So it's a remarkable piece in that it captures this element of man, this element that we don't like to think about, we don't like to talk about, and yet is so key to understanding the human condition itself, the temporary nature of life and the temporary nature of art.